Today we're going to talk about the camera that I think is the best 35mm SLR that anybody's ever produced, and that is the Pentax Spotmatic. This was my first SLR. It was given to me by my father when I was about eight years old. And I think it was his first SLR before that. I used it consistently from, from when I was about eight till about now, and it's never let me down. I've never gone out on a job with it and had it lock up. I've never had a shutter failure. I've had people complain about the way it looks. It's come back from being serviced with little tags on it that say poor cosmetic condition. My brother took it to a school dance once and someone said, is your father a professional photographer? And he said, why do you ask? And they said, well, no self-respecting amateur would keep a camera in that condition. <laughs> no. Um, he did, my father did actually admit that he scraped some of the paints off the edges with a coin because he wanted it to look a little bit more like Don McCullen's Nikon. Um, I quite like the Vietnam War look, <laughs> but um, not everybody does. The Pentax is a simple camera, glass in the front and film in the back. Bells and whistles are kept somewhere else, but it's very solid, it's unflappable and indestructible, and has a shutter that sounds like a rifle being loaded. The Asahi Optical Company is one of Japan's most renowned camera and lens manufacturers. Their story started making glasses in 1919, before moving into making lenses in the 1930s. In 1952 they started making cameras and produced the Asahi Flex, Japan's first SLR, modelled after the 1939 German-built Practica Flex. The name Pentax came from the Asahi Flex's successor, named after the pentaprism it used and styled to sound like contact. And so the Pentax was born. The original 1964 Spotmatic was one of the first SLRs on the market to offer a through-the-lens metering system. It was originally designed to use a spot metering system, but shortly before production, Asahi decided that a spot metering system would be too difficult to use, but it was too late in the production process to change the name, and so the Spotmatic name stuck. The camera has a mechanical shutter with a speed range from a thousandth of a second to one second and bulb. There is a self-timer, shutter lock and counter, the ASA setting for the meter is on the speed dial, and the light meter needle can be seen through the viewfinder. And it feels great, it's solid, and it's paired with the fantastic Takuma lenses. These lenses are very inexpensive. You can pick them up for between 50 and 100 pounds. You can put them on your modern digital cameras with a M42 adapter. It gives you a fantastic sort of vintage character in the lens, and everything starts looking like the godfather. Such a basic camera means that the photographer has to do all the internalization. The more work you give the camera, the less the photographer has to think about what they're doing. After all, it's you that takes the picture, not the camera. So by using a camera like this, you will become a better photographer. The only vice this camera really has is that if you use the wind-on mechanism and you're brutal with it, it will snap the film sprockets on you. Which means that you then have to open it up fix it and close the back again. So at this point in the video, I'd usually use the camera for the first time, but as I've just explained, this was my first SLR, so I would be lying to you. So I'm gonna try something which I have never tried on this camera, which is double exposures. In fact, I don't think I've done double exposures on film before. So I thought I'd give that a go because I could well mess it up. So my plan is that I've got the camera, I've lit this back wall bright. My subject, which right now is me, is dark. And what will happen is that when film gets to black on the negative or white on the positive, it's fully activated. You can't expose it anymore. So all of this will remain white. The figure will remain a silhouette. And whatever I choose to double expose will only appear on the figure. So that's the plan. Let's see if it works.
For this super simple way of doing double exposures, just load the camera normally, shoot your first subject, wind your film back, and then shoot your second subject with it. So I did the first exposure as normal because I wanted the density in the white. So I'm doing these secondary exposures two to three stops underexposed so that they're not going to swamp or damage the whites in the original exposure. Well, that's the theory. I'm too fat to get in the tree. The downside to doing this very simple way of doing double exposures is that your double exposures might not always line up properly on the film, but it did give me the option to shoot double exposures in two separate places, which is great. And I personally didn't mind having the lines and the double double exposures in the images. In this case, it worked out quite nicely. So to wrap up this video really quickly. I think this is the best SLR ever, anyone's ever made. It's been reliable for 30 years. It's never let me down once. The lenses are fantastic. If you like this video, like, share, sub and shoot. And I'll see you in the next video.